Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here and welcome to my new Football Manager 2015 series with Aston Villa. You know I made a video uh, the other day about uh, this new series I want to be starting, uh, doing a more chilled Let's Play, I suppose you can say, showing everything 100%. You'll be seeing everything I do, and I just want to be be sitting back and playing the game and just uh, being even more real than normal, I suppose you can say. Not really going to have any edits on my video, because uh, like I said, that's something I wanted to try and I could see myself doing in the future, and you'll see that with this series, and to see if you like it or not, and over the course of the series. Uh, episodes length, it won't be set, like my current videos, usually in between 20 and 30 minutes for Football Manager because I'm set in doing that two games per episode when I do them live. But again, as I said, I'll be changing my other series to be, yeah, I'll be playing more off camera, but then still showing important games, Bar City and Man United. And this one is showing uh, everything really just like I am now, st from right the start, right at the start of the save and go through from there, really. Like a live stream, pretty much, but in YouTube form. So yeah, as I said, episodes will be... In between 30 minutes and an hour, there won't, like I said, there won't be a set time for each one. It's just uh, enjoying myself playing the game pretty much. And that's when you probably get uh, the biggest enjoyment factor. Uh, I will as well. And you, you guys should get that uh, from me. And also, something I notice, uh, people say they listen to my videos while they play Football Manager. This will be perfect for those. I know this is not going to be perfect for everyone. You're going to be saying, and that's one thing as well, I'm not going to have thumbnails on these videos as well because I could be just uploading heaps of them. Uh, I might record, I might have a certain day where I record this series. Like, it'll be... Because I'll record a lot in one day. Because, yeah, if episodes are like close to an hour or something like that, it takes a lot, of, a lot out of your day. So you can't expect to like uh, record five of them every single day. It takes about five, six hours. So yeah, I'll just have to do every single, uh, or every so often, every few days or something when I f actually feel like I'm not forced to doing a video. That's what I want my YouTube channel to be. But I don't want, I want, I don't want to wake up and feel like, oh, I have to do this certain. You know, you know what I mean? So yeah, this series won't be for everyone. But if you just enjoy Football Manager. And listening to me, just give my general tips and you'll get more of it because I'll give more tips about everything when I'm creating my tactics and doing transfers as well. That's a big thing. I don't really show the transfers in my videos or while I do them anyway because it's a long process. So this process could take me about, I don't know, two or three episodes before I get in. And yeah, two or three episodes are about a couple hours. So if you're one of those guys who like you always complain about me going on all the time and not getting into it or whatever... Uh, if you, th I guess you mean not playing the game. You're talking about a lot of stuff, but that's what Football Manager is like. You're probably not going to like this because that's what it's going to be about. So I'll just warn you here, uh, especially this early part. Because for me to set up a season, training and stuff takes about... Or training and tactics takes about half an hour. So that's what the main of this episode is going to be. Um, yeah, like seeing the team and looking at tactics and all that good stuff. So either way, um, hopefully you enjoy this new series. It's probably something yeah, you're going to see different... And could be uploaded a lot. Uh, we'll see how it goes down anyway. But I'm really excited to get underway. So we're the new manager here. Uh, that is good. And personal message. See, that's the same situation. I wanted to play this like I would do in a private save. I wouldn't waste my time. Usually I just skip meetings. And don't worry about that. Yeah, we've got transfer updates as well. This is a huge thing. This is something huge we've got to go through. We got, obviously, two loans in, and I've got, yeah, the updated transfer, so, of course, we got Sc Scott Sinclair on loan, and just the whole save, <laughs> yeah, has updated transfers, and some added wonder kids as well that have deserved that, of course, there's a few talents, but anyway, of course, we have Tom Cleverly on loan, there is an agreement for 4.5 million for the song, but I'm not sure if I will. I'm not sure if I... Depends how well he does for me and how often he gets injured because you can see there he's injury prone. I just want to see that. See how he goes. And also Scott Sinclair, um, as I mentioned, on loan from Man City. So being at Man City, he would have been rated well. But I'm always skeptical about players in the Premier League who have low mental attributes. And he doesn't have too many highs. When, like, look at this. Vision's poor. 
teamwork's poor, positioning's poor, leadership is poor, decisions is poor. Like I say, yeah, below 10. That's what I regard as poor. And concentration, 8. Composure, bravery, 10. And aggression, 9. Mental attributes, and there's some really important ones there that are really low, like a vision for an attacking player, decision-making and concentration. Those are two really important ones for Premier League level. Like, he's a guy I reckon that could, yeah, slot in well in a championship team. But I feel Premier League, he doesn't have the mental side of things there. But I feel he's been downgraded a little bit because at Man City not really been playing. I thought he was fantastic at Swansea. It was a bad career move. And that season before he left, he scored in his first game in the league. I actually remember watching that game where he scored. And it's a ba- it was a bad move for him, honestly. He obviously... It's hard to downgrade... Or no... um. It's hard to reject, for him to reject the money. Look, 41.5k per week. It's hard to reject that. Most people would move for the money if you're just, if you're being honest. You can just yeah, sit in the background and say, nah, I would have stayed at Swansea. It would be a better career move. But when you're offered that money, yeah, you, don't, you can't really put yourself in their situation if you're not in that situation. The only positive, well, there's a couple positive sign, signs. <laughs> He's rapid. He's rapping, of course, good penalty taking. Remember when, um, yeah, he took the penalties, didn't they, to get Swansea promoted um, into the Premier League? I remember in the playoffs, the player finals. I just remember him taking a penalty and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, and yeah, he's got just rapid pace. That's what he's best at. So this season, he could be an important player for us in some games with that. And at least his work rate. At least his work rate is 20. That's really, really high. And he's a good dribbler, of course. And if he gets the chance, he can finish. 15 finishing is not terrible for a winger. That's actually not too bad for a winger. So, obviously, he prefers to play down the left side. I'm not even sure what the tactic's going to be yet. We're going to, yeah, analyze the team. And I guess we'll see from there. But, yeah, that's how it's going to go down. So, we'll go back. That's Scott Sinclair. And, yeah, we won't worry about all these players that are going out on loan. Is Darren Bent... There's actually, yeah, a decent amount of guys I could sell this or next season when they come back from being on loan. Like, you got Bent, his contract running out end of the season. So, yeah, probably just going to let him go on, yeah, big wages and probably not the top level anymore. And I'll talk about more why I picked Aston Villa soon as well. Um, Alexander Tonev, probably not going to be good enough. They signed him in real life. He signed them from whatever league. What's this league? Um... Polish, a Polish league, so even if he did well there, I don't think that's enough to yeah, warrant going straight to the Premier League. It just... That's why he's gone out on loan, I reckon, to Celtic. He's not Premier League level, that's shown in his attributes. Nicholas Hellenia, so I remember like last year and the year before, he was a good potential player in the game. I think he's lost that potential now. Uh, moving to Aston Villa, so he's probably again a player who's going to be sold. And, yeah, he's gone back to the team he was signed from, just hoping to reach that ability again, Aston Villa, I suppose. But, yeah, he was really developing a really good player, and I don't think he has that potential anymore, unfortunately. Chris Hurd, the Australian player, again, I've got to be realistic. It'll be great to have him in the team. He actually has some decent mentals, uh, a lot of higher ones. But he, I would say, if, if you got to look where he lacks, he's... He's balanced in areas. He's balanced. for a, You can play a centre-back, I suppose, or centre mid. I guess for centre mid, he's not good enough as like a creator. But I feel as a defender, he's okay. But then he's only got 10 markings. So for where I want to go with Aston Villa, he won't be part of the future. So I probably will be looking to sell him. But again, his contract is running out. So we will be looking to let him go like a few of these guys. Uh, Joe Bennett as well. Um, if I go back to my Aston Villa save in FM13, I remember a lot of these players. I actually did it. It was late. It was late in FM13, so I was able to get a transfer update like I'm doing now, and he signed for them, if I remember, cor- remember correctly. Uh, if we go to history, yeah, 2012-13 season. Actually, it was this, it was the signings. I think it was the deals at the end of the season. It was, like a, like I said, a very, very late save in FM13. But, yeah, he was one of the guys that joined. Uh, he's okay. He's like a pacey fullback. He could improve significantly in the future. So we've got to, yeah, aid his development and see how he goes. But he's 24 already. He's got to be reaching that level. So, yeah, again, technically, he's probably not that amazing. But, again, we've got to look to get the best out of our players tactically. Uh, Gary Gardner, um, I don't think he's too bad a player, but probably not Premier League. A little bit of potential, but like I said, won't be Premier League. 
Don't think how about uh, Donacian. He's got a really good pace. 18 pace for a centre-back is lightning. If this was FIFA, uh, yeah, we'd still play him. Uh, even though if he's not the current ability for this level, the pace would help him. But this is football manager where that doesn't really matter as much. <laughs> so, Ender Stevens, he's okay. He's okay. But again, for where I want to get to with Aston Villa, he probably won't make the grade. And when does his contract run out? He's only 2015, so yeah, a lot of these guys are going to be letting go, which is, I suppose, it'll free up wages. Um, Antonio Luna, yeah, he's 2016. He's Alan Luna at Verona, so he's a good player, I think. It's still, well, he looks a bit older than 23 in my view, but <laughs> either way, he's okay. And Yukuba Silla. Uh, I actually rate this guy as well, but out on loan at the wall, this long name. <laughs> so either way, I think that's like a Turkish team judging off their name, but some high attributes in him, some high mentals and some high physicals as well. He's got some line in his hair there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, he can be an okay player. So that's it with the loans. Uh, Mana subscriptions, there's, I don't really know what I take. I do take off some things, but maybe not instantly. Uh, short list here, I don't like when they keep sending me stuff because I'm someone who likes to have heaps of players on my short list. That's just how it goes for me. And also... What else do I take off? Match reports, award news, yeah, competition draws, those kind of stuff and jobs. I'm not going to be interested in managing anyone else, so that doesn't really matter to me. And if anything else pops up in my messages, I yeah really won't worry about that. So uh, we'll analyze the team as we're going to tactics, but also our transfer budget is it's like I might I'll probably not even simulate the first day or not simulate. I won't even continue to the next day. Probably in this episode, we're going to analyze our team and then I'll try and set up a tactic. That's what I'm guessing this first episode will be based on. But again, I just want you to know, I don't want to plan this. I just want this to be really chilled, really really relaxed and yeah, not being forced to do something. As I mentioned earlier, don't want to be, like I said, I don't want to be waking up like forced to do a video with YouTube, nothing like that. And same with my saves. I don't want to be like when I'm recording a video, oh, I have to end it now, I've played two games, something like that. That's what this is going to be different with this series and hopefully you like it. But here we have got a five million transfer budget, but we it's even less than that because we've only got seven hundred <laughs> in the wages. So we'll probably have to drop it to like maybe two point seven million, and we'll gauge where we're at with that. Yeah, that's probably maybe a bit higher, maybe up to three point three. I reckon that could be, yeah, 3.3, .3, and then, yeah, th look how much threes there, look at all the three, 3.33, and then, like, for the trans budget, 3.33 million, and then 33k available wage budget, so go through confidence here, and you can see the Barclays Premier League, the minimum expectation is that the team achieve a mid-table position within the Premier League this season, see, I feel... Yeah, that's acceptable, of course, but I feel like Aston Villa, that's even hard. That's pretty hard mid-table position for Aston Villa. Like, it's not a hard challenge, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the media prediction is 15. That's I thought it might be avoid relegation when setting up this save, but I guess not, and they have higher expectations than that. Like, I remember seeing Aston Villa finishing around the maybe fifth or sixth position a few years back. Uh, we'll go through the history, and they've... Never all oh, they won the Premier League. I was gonna say champ yeah, they won the Champions League one time. Big effort for Aston Villa, so one time winners in nineteen eighty two. So that's I like teams with previous glory to be honest, but at the same time I've liked teams who haven't won Premier Leagues much at the same time. So there's always a positive or a reason to be a team. But yeah, to get back that older dominance uh, would be great. If you click on Premier League, you can't see when they've if you click it would just go to Premier League, yeah. You can't see when they've won. But, yes, this is what I mean. Yeah, this, around this period here, this is when I remember, yeah, watching them closely and stuff. Around from, where's this, 2007 to 2010. Those seasons. They finished sixth three years in a row. And then ever since then, they had, yeah, dropped off three positions to ninth. And then, just completely... Three seasons going close to the relegation zone in just one hit. The season where they finished 16th, two seasons before that, they finished 6th, just outside Champions League position. That's insane. And then if you travel back a bit further, but they've had seasons like that before. It's kind of their yo-yo team, not 
yo-yo team from the Premier League to Championship, but up and down, like at the, near the upper, like the upper to- or topper side of the table, um, and then they go down a bit. Like they got 16th here, like 2002, 2003, then 2005, 2006, a couple 16 finishes. And then before then, look at all that top, oh, from 99, oh, I suppose that's going back a bit now, not really in the current generation. Uh, but yeah, they have 4th, 5th, 7th, 6th, and that's that's my goal to get them maybe in the next two or three seasons. I'm not going to do it in one season. Their last Premier League win, obviously, is 1980 and 81 season and won the Champions So obviously, they had a good spell there. If they That's when they won the Champions League or, yeah, after that season. So you go back. Yeah, they won in 1982. So wait, what's the 1982 finish? Or was that that one? Yeah, it would be. So, the season they won the Premier League... Oh, no, sorry. The season they won the Champions League, they came 11th in the league. Is that right? See, it's... I like looking at history and these kind of things. They finished 11 in the Premier... That's like 82, yeah? 1982. And that's when they won the Champions League. If anyone <laughs> remembers that, leave your thoughts. Uh, but there wouldn't be too many unless I got some older viewers. But anyway... We shall be moving back, but yeah, I just want to explain why I wanted to pick Aston Villa. I like their team. I managed them in FM13, was probably one of my most favorite saves that I've done on YouTube. Um, I actually really enjoyed that. I did enjoy that series, and of course, back in FM13, I didn't have as many subscribers. I think then I would have had maybe around close to 10,000 subscribers, um, close to that, but a lot of that was for FIFA as well. Uh, it was hard to, yeah, anyone who's wondering about how to get a lot of subscribers on Football Manager, I know there's there's very rare amounts that get a lot of subscribers. Like, I would regard a lot over 5,000. That's a decent amount. Then you can grow from there. It's hard, honestly. There's only a few. But FIFA did help for me. That's just me personally. So I would recommend for you to play another game, not just Football Manager solely, unless you're confident in what you want to do. Because, yeah, there is a couple other guys with a decent amount of subscribers that purely do Football Manager. But anyway, yeah, I wanted to explain why I want to be Aston Villa, and there's quite a few reasons. I enjoy them, and yeah, the challenge to get back to where they used to be, and Accor, he's again one of those others that signed around that time, FM13, uh, in the transfer update late in the season. That's when I started the save, and he's always been just a beastly player, Jaws Accor. He's, he, he's pretty attacking as well. He runs with the ball through the centre, He'd be an interesting striker because apparently he can play there slightly. So if you could improve his finishing and with that, yeah, strength about him. But he's just like a B centre back. Won't be looking to play him anywhere else. Got that potential. Uh, so I won't go through every single player because this is the Premier League. And again, people always wonder why I do a lot of Premier League saves. That's because I have the most knowledge about the Premier League, really. At least out of the Poppy Leagues, if you don't count A League, like that I know about. Yeah, I have more knowledge about Premier League, and here I don't have to go into, you know, a lot about these guys, like maybe just someone like a, a Carles Gil, a Spanish player who just recently signed, I think, in the transfer update, so yeah, he'll be one, to, just like I'm looking at here, that will be an interesting player that could be really, really good for us, it just depends how he develops, because he's only 21, what's his potential like, Does it, it doesn't really say his potential to be a leading player, or star, or anything like that, but I think just looking at him, he does have the potential to be a star at 21, he's obviously one of our more skillful players, like a good dribbler, decent pass, he'll be a creative player, pretty quick with acceleration and agility, both of 16, that's something you want to look for, uh, Leandro... Or Leandro Bakuna, I remember him as well. All these players, they were ones that signed around that era. See, that's it. They signed in the 2013 season. And these are all guys that maybe some people thought they weren't Premier League ready, but they did have potential in them and they still do. Like Bakuna, I reckon he can be one of the better players in the team. Center midfielder, but can play right back and right wing and even left wing if needed. He's a talented player and a very, very good t- a free kick taker, especially from range. You can see there. So he's a talent for us. Anyone else that sticks out? Um, yeah, Ali Sissoko. He's a good left back. He's a guy in previous years I've signed maybe back to FM13, FM14. I would have considered signing. I've signed him before, definitely in Football Manager years back. So yeah, he's a good player. He's always played at decent teams. Look, you got Leon, Valencia, and Liverpool, and then drops to Aston Villa and even Porto there as well. 
And yeah, Leon signed him for 13 million. And he's still only 26. And he still looks decent, doesn't he? He doesn't look terrible. He looks like a good tacking fullback. So he's important for, again, Ashley Westwood, another one that signed around that time. You can see there. So all these signings coming in. Not coming in now. I mean, at that stage, I remember these guys from my FM13 save. The memories are coming back. And yeah, uh, from my memory, memory, Ashley Westwood just was really was really good for me. I didn't expect him to be as good as he was. He was one of those players that were coming up from League One into the Premier League, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, he needed a better upgrade. I feel I felt, but he performed for me. Uh, oh, is this a weird... Carlos Sanchez. I'm pretty sure I signed him, actually. I'm going to actually go check that save <laughs> after that, but they signed him in real life. I'm pretty sure I did sign him in on the like approach to sign in January in the, for the second season, if my memory serves me correct. But he comes in as a very important player, strong defensive midfielder, exactly what you want. He's not a bad pass. He's not absolutely amazing, but he does his job as a defensive midfielder. So look in that. Um, and Zogbia as well, I think, maybe a save I did with Wigan in FM 08, I think he's, yeah, Wigan, FM 08, he would have been there, I remember, yeah, started at Newcastle, but yeah, and Zogbia is a guy I've always rated in Football Manager, not for a top team, of course, but for the team he's at, if that makes sense, like here for Aston Villa, lower mid-table team, we're looking to transfer them, transform them, I should say, like I said, back into like a top kind of eight position, in that sixth as well, maybe against Europa League, try and win that, whatever, that would be a good goal for this save, I suppose, but anyway, yeah, he's a quick player, really quick, and he used to play left back as well, so he's still got that in him, very versatile, so yeah, uh, who else, Fabian Delph, ex-Leeds player, I like him actually, he's got a little bit more potential to grow, but at 24, he's not going to grow drastically, yeah, still good. Joe Cole, some experience there. I've always rated Joe Cole as well. He's getting a bit older now, but he's always been a technically gifted player. But yeah, lowering in his attributes now. But he's got those good 15s. He's got the 15 technique, 15 passing, 15 first touch, 15 crossing, 15 dribbling. Those are like at his best days. Those used to be like 16s and 17s and that. And he used to be a beastly player for Chelsea. He was a superstar. But yeah, obviously all players get old. It's expected. And then you've got Agbongle, who we're going to have trouble striking-wise because we've got Benteke injured. How long has Benteke injured for? Oh, two, three months, yeah, at the start of the season. And Libor Kozak, who actually was in the reserves. I'm like, why is he in the reserves? Oh, he's injured. He's a long-term injury. It's not that long. Five weeks to two months. So he should be back around, hopefully, at the start of the season. If not, he might uh, miss the first couple. But again... I don't really like those just target men striker where they're just good at a target man. I'm not sure if he'll be equal in another role because he's really slow as well. But he's pretty tall. We'll see anyway. Any other, yeah, who's the other strikers that would be playing if they're not? you got Andy Vyman. He's naturally a striker. Those are the kind... I like poachers. To, especially when I play with one strike. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. But, okay, major consideration before I think about training, which I will later... Um, going to work on his composure. That's my first instinct right there. Um, composure for Andy Vyman, without a doubt. He needs to be working on that. It's only eight. Again, mental has to be important. And also Gabby Agbonglahor, natural striker. Can play as winger as well, but like, I feel he does well in Football Manager because he's got really good strength and really good pace. Very, he's lightning. You know, Agbonglahor is lightning. So it'd be very interesting if we can get a lot out of him. See, he's a target man technically, but that's more because of his strength. He's not a really tall player. Just, yeah, his strength will be yeah strong on the ball and that. Uh, what else? He could be target man and complete forward. Complete forward. What good attributes if I go on attack here? Yeah, some decent attributes, but we'll just clear that. So, interesting. We don't have, like I'll say, we don't have amazing strikers. You've got Benteke, like, but he's going to be missing. For a bit of the start of the season. Like maybe when he play the first game of the season, he might be out for a, a few more weeks. Like two or three more weeks. So, what's our first game? That's so important. Hopefully some easy... Oh, we get Man, Man City at home. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, this is why... like Football Manager is a huge game. Like... So, so much happens. 
really. So much can happen. Well, not can happen. Of course, it can happen. Like, you take so long to do certain things, if you know what I mean. Like, a season, you can be a guy who micromanages. That's what I basically mean. I micromanage a lot. Like you can see here, I haven't even gone to the next day yet. That's because I like to do a lot of things, make sure everything is set. Yeah, before even we go a day, because yeah, players get signed really quickly. That's all I want to tell you. Pla- or you probably know anyway. Players get signed really quickly, so you got to watch out for that. Like if there's someone I want to sign and you don't want to, yeah, miss out on that. If they're like kind of a value player in the game, like they're cheap, like those kind of cheap signings, and I don't want to miss on someone like that. So, Man City's going to be tough. Maybe you can try and get a draw out of it. And then we've got Crystal Palace. they still got Tottenham. So, it's not the easiest starts, especially with Man City. But then we've got Crystal Palace. So, definitely, I'm looking for at least three points. Minimum. That's like a win at the Crystal Palace. I'll be looking at at least four points from that, actually. I'll be looking for a draw against Man City. And then a win against Crystal Palace. But, what are we going to do now? I'm going to see... We'll go to the board again. This is something I want to do. And yeah, just before I get into it, I'll mention again. um, Yeah, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier or not. But anyway, uh, on thumbnails, there's not going to be any thumbnails for this series. I'll probably add annotations though to the next episode. So hopefully yeah, I can upload. Ideally, once this series gets going, um, I'll probably want to be uploading, I don't know, maybe three or four a day because I can record heaps of them. And this is what I want to do at the minute. That's what you say. Like, I'll give you a warning for my YouTube channel. Like, in the future, like, and I've probably done it all the time, like, people will probably argue to start a lot of saves, I haven't done this year, though, in FM15, but, like, I always want to do something that I 100% enjoy, you know, like, I don't want to be forced to do something I'm not enjoying save-wise, so hopefully you do understand that, but, yes, this is what I wanted to talk about, we have no affiliated clubs, that's a problem, that's something I want, like, none at all for a Premier League team. That's not good, like, of any sort. So, you definitely be... How about senior affiliate? Yeah, Ghana extra income. Okay. They don't want to. I'll say it'll really help the club grow. They don't think the financial rewards are worth of the cost implementing this request, really. Uh, yeah, I'll say I won't be able to carry on my job in my first day, yeah? Uh, if this request isn't granted, I can see the club being left behind by the rivals. Come on! No, it's, it's not... I'm just going to understand. But that's disappointing. Like, normally that gets accepted. And, yeah, you go to get that team from, like, Japan or China or America that helps you get extra merchandising sales. They didn't feel the money being spent for that or yeah, the money that would be spending for that, we won't gain any money or something from that, I guess. That's what I got out of it. Like, I get it always with big teams, I guess, because they have more money to spend because you do have to pay pay for that. So I guess, what's the next one? Improve youth recruitment. So the rivals don't take our best local players. It's already good enough. Man, I hate... Can't they just accept it to make it... I'll just say we'll be left behind by our rivals, which makes sense what I originally said. I can't stress how enough I'm important or whatever that says. I really can't stress enough how important I believe this to be. This is why I don't like reading things while making videos, like press conferences and whatever. I understand. Okay, I understand. But come on, you got to show me something. Okay, affiliate club. Okay, overseas partner. To Greece. Isn't that just what I did with the other one? But again, they're just being a bitch about it, Randy. Financial benefits. Rivals. Fine. I can't stress. I can't pretend I'm not disappointed, but I do understand. Actually, I don't understand. Why are they requesting my... Or, yeah, rejecting my request right away. Oh my god. Affiliate club. We did it. we already did that crap. Fuck. That's not okay, it's not the greatest of starts here, but they think our facilities are good enough. Maybe I have to just accept that. Maybe I have to accept that. If we go to club, you look at facilities, they've got above average youth recruitment 
Average junior coaching. Whoa! Shit! <laughs> I didn't notice that at all, honestly. What? State-of-the-art training facilities and superb youth facilities. So, state-of-the-art. That's the best, isn't it? The best rating. So, we've got the best... But I want to improve the youth recruitment, getting the players to the club. Sure, it's all well and good having amazing facilities, but that's not going to get you a good young player through your youth intake. Sure, it's going to help your players reach their potential, but you've got to actually get those players through in the first place. So, sure, if I could sign them, if I could yeah, find some good young players, that could help. And, obviously, state-of-the-art training facility is going to attract a lot of players. If you just go to the general scouting, take-off trans are listed, and you see the quality of players that want to come, there's, like, absolute quality players, of course, like Andy Carroll. <laughs> a Delta Rat, nah. But, okay, I thought there might be a bit higher quality players that would want to join. Nathaniel Klein, it's not too bad, but we don't have money for that. We don't have money. We've got 3 million right now and like 33k available wage budget, man. We can't sign anyone of note. Like, we've got to look for one of those cheap guys, like I said. So, anyway, anyone in the under 28, 21, sorry, anyone in the under 21s I could promote, like all these high value guys. Jack Gralish, do you think I should give him a go? Should I give him a go? What does his current ability lie at? Um, good plan. Like, you could loan him out to champion, like, to a championship side, and he can have a decent season available for loan. But maybe we need some talent. Maybe we should at least give him a go. We'll put... Because if he's good enough for championship, if he's... He could probably still perform at this level. So, I am going to promote him into the senior squad. Because he's a talented player. He's a, w a very good winger. Could play center attacking mid as well. So, a lot of positions. Uh, he's got that sky high potential. Going to be star in the Premier League, as it says. So, we've got this guy on our book. So, that's what I mean. Aston Villa do have that ability of bringing through talents. Uh, Jack Rallish is definitely one of them. So, excited to see how he goes. Anyone else? Jed Steer, maybe a young goalkeeper. Well, not maybe. We do need a young goalkeeper coming through again. Doesn't say his actual potential, but you can see from his report... It's up to... His maximum potential is four and a half stars. So, that's really good. Uh, Brad Guzan. Uh, Guzan. However you say his name. But either way, I was thinking about him, actually. Like, whether I should try and sell a few players. And so, we can rebuild over this season. Because I actually get motivated by people. I check, like, full manager forums as well. And people see how they do. Or show how they do. More or less show their transfers. And some people make a lot of transfers right away, especially in the first season. They let go of a lot, and they bring through, obviously, who they think is good. Like, for example, who would I consider transfer listing here if we go by positions? You go, you're Brad Guzan. Even Shea Given, his contract runs out end of 2016, paying him 52k per week for a backup goalkeeper. Really? No way! <laughs> he's still, because he's still got that experience, like... He used to be, like, a main goalkeeper in the Premier League for whatever team he's at. Like, he used to play for Man City, most notable at Newcastle as well. As you can see here, he's... <laughs> it's so much. Yeah. He used to be here for so long. But, yeah, 52k per week. And then you look at Guzan. He's on 25k, like, half. Half of his wages, and Guzan's better than him. But he's not that amazing level. He's got okay ability. But you got to look to be... I'd love to bring someone in on my own. Because, okay, we could transfer this two of them. Both of them there. So, that's two. But it's kind of one position you're looking to reinforce. Uh, Nathan Baker. Um, and the way this is going, I might create the tactic in the second episode. <laughs> uh, really analyzing the team here. Uh, Nathan Baker. Uh, he's he, he's okay. He's a really good tackle and he's really strong. So, yes, I want to keep him. Uh, Kieran Clark's in the same boat. He's 24 now. He's still on the younger side. He's not an older player, of course. He's good enough. I wouldn't say, like, if we sell him around, what, you transfer list him, get 2 million for him, you wouldn't think you'd get someone too much better than him, would you? And he's been at the club for a while now. Ron Vlad, definitely not. He's probably going to be one of our better players this season. Uh, Philippe Senderos. So I reckon our centre-backs, we've got, yeah, we've got a good depth there. You've got Jaws Acor as well. You know about him. Uh, Matt Lowton's another one signed around that FM13 time. As you can see there, 2012-13 season he signed. But yes, um, I probably, 
Uh, it's hard to say. Could we get someone better than him? He's a, uh, he's only a decent player. I'm probably going to transfer list him. I think we could probably get someone better if he's if we go to our judgment. How the judgment uh, judging thirteen? Is there anyone better? McAndrew. Okay, he's he's fourteen and seventeen. Is there anyone better? Brian Jones. Well, 14 and 18. So what does he? 14 and 17. So next best is Brian Jones. Very good for potential judging. Chris Lorcan. Cowens. Watts. Goalkeeper. Yeah, these ones. Goalkeeper fitness coaches wouldn't be good at judging. So yes. Uh, Brian Jones, yeah? 14 judging ability and 18 for potential. And it says he's unlikely to improve in the future. And that's good judging his potential. So... Even though he signed, yeah, well, it's, this is third season at the club now, so it's not like he recently joined where he wouldn't want to leave. And see, he signed from Skybet League One. He probably still is Premier League level, but yeah, for those teams that probably would get relegated. That's my view on him. I think he's a okay, like attacking. Like again, it could be an argument: Are we going to get someone better than him? That could be it. But you're going to have to do those kind of transfers. Even Alan Hunton, Alan Hutton as well, he's probably worse. Like, he's, yeah, getting forward ability is not as good. Valued a little bit more. Likely to improve, fairly in inconsistent. So that would be another player who transfer this. I just want to see if there's enough. Kuhn Richardson, when did he join? Yeah, he just joined, so I wouldn't be selling him. Uh, versatile as well, so and really quick stamina as well. All that is good. Sissoko just joined. Westwood. Now nah, Westwood is good. He's got room to grow as well, judging off that report. And that's good judgment as well. He's fairly susceptible to injuries though. Could improve significantly in the future. So when you've got that, you've got to give them another chance, I believe. Now, Carl Sanchez just joined. And Zogbia, as I mentioned, I do like, so I will be keeping him. But if he doesn't impress, yeah, he'll be on the outer, <laughs> of course. Uh, Gil Gralish, they'll be staying, of course. Fabian Delph, hmm... Dolph's an interesting one. You see another guy? Yeah, he can improve significantly in the future and already a good player for most Premier League sides. Very quick and good balance. Joe Cole, he just joined as well. Uh, obviously, he's been in Premier League for quite some time. Still got a little bit of ability, enough ability, I feel. Then you've got Egg Bonglehor, who I do want to keep. He could be really good with that pace and strength. Andy Vyman, I don't think he's a superstar, but again, he's a guy... We've got potential. Potential. But is that enough? Should we... Hmm, interesting. Because the eight composure may not improve and he may struggle to score and maybe look to get the profit off of him. They signed him for free in real life when he was a bit younger from SK uh, Rapid Wien in Austria. Maybe we could cut and run and make some profit actually for the club when they signed him. 7.5 million. See, we could actually make some decent amount of cash from that. Nah, yeah, let's go for it. Vi let's transfer. I think, yeah, there's enough guys to transfer list here to rebuild. And we'll do that in the next episode. We'll look to rebuild. And I'm not sure if I'll set up the tactic right away. Yeah, we'll see how it goes down. But yeah, not needed for Vyman. I won't... I'll put the initial asking price 10 million. There we go. And anyone else, cleverly, of course, we can't sell. And Kozak, we probably won't be able to sell him. So he's 7.5 million as well. How much did they sign him for? 4.5 million. I think we'll leave him. I could be. I think he could be an asset if we utilize uh, the kind of player he is, like a player in the air. Um, well, a player who's dominant in the air, I think we'll keep him. Because yeah, him and Benteke both will be, so he could play with that kind of player. We'll see how it goes down. Because, yeah, no one's going to... He'll, he'll fail the medical. And five weeks to two months, that's probably when the season's going to start. So, yeah, I don't think we'd be able to sell him for those couple of reasons. So, yeah, that's one. Vyman, we don't have him. Not needed, yep. Yeah, not needed transfer list. I have a little, like, OCD, so I have to always, like, check things again twice. Um, anyway, uh, who else? The other was... I like Bakuna. Don't, um, yeah, Hutton and Lowton, both of them, I reckon, it's time to transfer list. Hutton's only getting older, 
um, in my experience now, especially in FM15, um, once they hit that 30 and 29, they just decrease drastically. So yeah, it's my time to rebuild the squad. And that's why I feel Aston Villa need. Like, you look at all these players, you know, like, oh, they're, they're okay for Premier League. You look, you could stay up with them. But that's what i got to maybe, i got to rebuild. i got to build a team I want to. So, put asking price, $5 million, uh, for him. Uh, what did I do for Vyman? Yeah, $10 million. And then we got Hutton and then Lowton. We'll transfer list him. We'll put not needed. Um, transfer list. Five million. If you compare, how do much for Hutton? We'll put the yeah, we'll put both five million, and we'll see what kind of offers we get. Uh, a call we wouldn't. Senderos no. Vlana. That I like that center. But that's some depth and quality in the center backs. A call for the future, and I suppose now as well. Good player. Uh, Senderos experienced in the Premier League as well. Very good. Ron Vla again probably will be one of our better players and best center back. I feel with Senderos. Uh, Kieran Clark. You can play a few positions there, like left back, centre back, sweeper. If we will play that, not sure if we will though. Nathan Baker got a little bit of potential, a little bit of room to grow, but amazing tackler. I remember in FM13 he had like similar attributes, like really high tackling, and he had some yeah player of the match performances because of that tackling ability. Of course he's not amazing, but he can have some really good games. And then our other two keepers, Shea Given. Uh, definitely is not needed. Wasting too much yeah, wages on him. No wonder we struggle in that area. Uh, we'll just put like 250k. Uh, whoever can afford to buy him. And Brad Guzan. He's already wanted. So. See, there's quite a few. Uh, Bakuna. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, Sunderland want him. I wouldn't want to sell him. Ron Vla wanted minor interest from Everton, so I won't worry about that. Like, players might say they want to leave. Nathan Baker, major interest from Crystal Palace. So, yeah, another Premier League team thinks he's quality. But anyway, on Guzan, before transfer listing him, I'll offer him to Sunderland. There's minor interest because usually when you transfer list a player, clubs will be looking to pay less for him. But anyway, we'll, we'll just offer him maybe just a bit above his value. You put like 8 million and they might budge for it. So... I think we'll leave it at that um, as we do that. Um, actually, with that decision, before I actually do it, I'll see. I'm not really sure. I'll see how long this episode's gone for because I'm uh, 43 minutes. For me, it takes a bit longer to do a tactic, but we'll go We'll go into it. And, it may, yeah, the time may be a bit shorter than that because I'll edit out like some like boring parts. Not heap, just like where I stop for a second to catch my breath. I'll just edit that part out. So hopefully you understand that. But anyway, again, we'll look at quickly look at my team. I just this is how I create a tactic. I go to the squad screen and then I take a quick look at the positions and everything like that to see uh, what kind of tactic I'll create. So, but yeah, like the fullbacks, we won't take too much into account. We probably need a natural left back though. No, uh, no, nah, no. Nah, yeah, we do. Yeah, for Sissoko, Richardson. I suppose those two are enough. I was wondering if you need another, but probably two in each position is what you need. And also another thing, if you look at the wingers, we we've got guys that can play winger. Of course, Agbonglahu, but we could be using him as a striker. Then you've got Scott Sinclair, who's natural as a winger. And then you got Gill, who's natural as attacking midfielder but can play winger. Then you got Gralis as a natural winger. Then you got Enzogbia, again natural attacking midfielder but can play left wing and right wing. So it's going to be a decision: do I play with wingers or don't I? Like, what kind of formation am I going to create? I suppose. Yeah, um, we'll find that out right now. So now, just move on to the tactic screen. Uh, we'll be looking to create something. I'll I'll probably change it up to be honest. Once I originally select, I'll go with something and then. Uh, I'll probably look to change it, yeah, to suit my players, positions-wise, that's what I mean. So, we'll probably just go for a general four at the back. We've got, yeah, a decent amount of centre-backs, and we've got full-backs as well. Um, I want to see how a few of these look. Four defenders formation. Um, I want, I like to create slightly unique formations as well. Uh, how about, what's a four one three two? Hmm. Well, how about a four one three one one? That sounds interesting. Hmm. I've an idea with this. See, sometimes I get an idea from formation with a few changes. 
Like, if we initially push the wingers there, and if I just go skip tactics creator, <laughs> so we can go straight into it, and we just do a quick pick. That's what I like to do. Then I like to change my formation there. So I could actually just quickly turn this into a 4 one 2 one 2 not 4, four 2 three, one yeah? The, then I've got to look, do we have really good center midfielders? we got Ashley Westwood. What's his best stat? Like, he's a good deep line playmaker. Yeah, he's a good creative guy. So you do want that deep line playmaker role in your team. But do we have others? It can't just be based on one guy. We've got Tom Cleverly. So again, he can be a roaming and advanced playmaker type. So you probably do want to be playing with central midfielders. It could be a bit risky going with a formation like that. This is what you probably go with a bigger team because then you don't have anything defensively. So we've got Carlos Sanchez. He's a natural defensive midfielder. We could almost change this to a 4-3-3. You drop attacking midfielder out, but I feel, yeah, we do want to play with that cam. Got AMC, <laughs> as it's called in Football Manager. Um, and you've got Joe Cole. He, so he'll, he'll definitely come in as that cam. Center attacking mid. Uh, Kieran Richardson at the same time. He's a center mid. And left back as well. Um, but, the, yeah. Um, Ashley West. We could almost play with defensive midfielders. How about Fabian? See, all of these center mids we have can be retrained as a defensive midfielder. Maybe apart from Richardson. I'm fit. Oh. We could probably. Oh, it's a hard decision. I don't know. I'm torn between it because we have a few guys that can play cam. And for me, playing with one defensive midfielder and one center mid, then one attacking midfield, for, for me, that looks weird if you just play it like that. it's It looks narrow, but it could work. Hmm. It's an interesting one because you've got to, yeah, uh, build the formation to how it will suit the team. Or maybe this is not the setup for us if I'm looking to do something unique. But usually, something unique starts at the back four. When you have a back four, there's not, not much too unique about it. You play five at the back, but I don't want to be too defensive at the same time. I don't, I don't want to play like that. Um, in theory, anyway, I don't. <laughs> um, I could try it. Definitely. Five defender formation. What kind of ones are out there? What's 4 1? No. 5 4 1. But. Rejig it a bit. Get wingers in there. You got Sinclair. I think he's more of a winger. Oh, or inside forward. I probably. I like inside forwards. I like my wingers to cut in. So being inside forwards would do that. I feel. And Igbonglho. Actually. Benteke. Has he got... Yeah, he's got complete forward as well. So, with Igbonglho and Benteke both complete forwards, we'll get him into there. And this is the thing as well. If we sell... What's his name? Andy Vyman. We probably won't need to get in another striker. Because then we've got enough there. So, if we're playing one striker. So, I reckon we'll go with that. We'll play with a complete forward on attack. See, he drops back. I always look at that and see center forward. And it's almost a position of a center forward, isn't it, as well? See how it dropped back a little bit compared to a striker? But anyway, yeah, that looks that looks okay. So we've got inside forwards there to create. I'm not sure whether to play inside forward on attack and support, but that's something you're just going to experiment with, I feel. Uh, but... You probably need three in midfield. This could just end up being a 4-3-3, yeah? <laughs> but then, oh, we're missing that again with that attacking midfielder. So, no, I don't think this is wise to do. No, it's not. you got Cleverly at centre-back. No. Even though that's not... Nah. I'm not going to use the archive tactic, of course. I want to create it here. Hmm. How about 4 4 one, one? Because you've got still wingers, yeah, Scott Sinker, but then he can only play left mid and not right mid. You can play right wing, though. 
Mm, interesting. How do you play wingers? Oh, then it turns into that 4-3, 4 3 4 2 3 one kind of. How about the other wingers? you got Gil. See, they always struggle to play that other one, that other that right midfield instead of the right wing. There's always something like that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, where's... Yeah, Jack Rallish. Is he in the same boat or can he play there? No, nah, I suppose he can play there, but he's more natural as that winger position. You know what I mean? He's more natural there, so I do want to play those. Maybe I should go in with this and don't worry about Sanchez being a defensive midfielder. He can be a ball-winning midfielder as a center mid. You just put that role in. Sanchez, ball-winning midfielder on defend. There we go. That's one of his better... You go center mid, ball in midfielder right up there. And you go and defend. Got some strong attributes. You got teamwork strength in there. So that's good. I reckon yeah, we sorted that out, didn't we? And then we'll probably drop a deep line playmaker into there. I feel that's best. If, and Zogbia plays there. He's more of a tacky midfielder. Okay, you can't check it like that. We go... I can't check center mid because it's yellow there. And he prefers the left side, so he could potentially, if we train him there, not sure if we will or not. But, yeah, you've got a guy like Westwood who can come in there, deep play and playmaker, bang, we'll go in. So, yeah, Westwood, there he goes. And you've got Dalp, uh, Fabian Dalf. Um, See, then you don't have a deep play and playmaker for him. Or, or See, it's hard to fit the roles for all your players, isn't it? Isn't it? Ah. Oh. So, yeah, I think this is the setup of the team at least. We'll get the inside forwards on. On attack. And something I'll choose initially. <sighs> Control or attacking? See, we're going to need another formation of this as well when we play against top four teams. So, I'm going to create... I think, yeah, the rest of creating tactics is going to be in the next episode as well. I'm going to leave it here for you guys to leave your suggestions, what I should do. And so, I can take that from you guys as well. I want to do this. I want this to be about me playing the game. But, yeah, what what you think formation was. And I'll leave it here. Because I felt, yeah, this should be enough for the first episode. I've got at least my idea tactically. I want to go with a 4-2-3-1. It looks like we will go with the center mids. But, yes, when we play against a bigger team, I, I want a defensive version of this tactic as well. So, attacking version, I probably, I'm not sure if I want three tactics. Maybe two. A defensive version and then an attacking version so i'll leave it here for now leave your suggestions also signing wise but i'm gonna have to sell all these players first and yeah hopefully you enjoyed this style um you're seeing everything and next episode is going to be about yeah, po yeah polishing off the tactic and also making some sales and then hopefully making some transfers so hopefully you enjoy this uh, drop a like if you have like enjoyed this method so far i suppose you'll get yeah more of a gauge of it as we go on and yeah around hour long episodes will be like from about 40 minutes to an hour and sometimes could be 90 minutes sometimes <laughs> just like really long episodes and if you'd really enjoy that uh, drop in your comments just listening to me talk about football manager because i felt like that's the reason i kind of s started making football manager videos when i actually created my channel what i created my channel for i felt i could talk about a lot about football manager so yeah this kind of series could be f perfect for me uh, where I just record heaps and longer videos, much longer, uh, doing every everything, um, showing everything I do. So I feel, yeah, when I look at myself, I always do that. I like see what I, what kind of videos could I see myself doing when I'm doing YouTube as completely a full time full time job. Um, like right now, I'm just still at home with my parents, of course. Like when I move out, what could I see myself waking up every single day doing? This is definitely one series I could see myself doing every single day, waking up to do, just recording Football Manager, 100% stress-free, you know what I mean? So yeah, either way, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, drop a like, your feedback on the tactics, uh, players I should bring in. Uh, you don't really know how much transfer budget I'm going to have. You can maybe estimate how much I'm going to get for other players. But we'll see how it goes either way. Uh, drop a like. Subscribe if this is the first video you have seen from me. More coming like this. And I'll see you guys next time.